I've been sitting here for about 10 minutes trying to figure out how to make the kitchen look better, how to make myself look better, how to angle. I mean, if you could see the setup, I have my phone filming this because I don't have a filming camera anymore because I rarely do videos, really. I have it propped on my laptop. I have my laptop on top of a candle and I got the kitchen table. I've moved into a new house and it's not conducive to filming. Hello and welcome back to my very sporadic YouTube channel where I upload every now and again, bemoan the fact that I don't have enough subscribers or watchers to make any money from it and then wonder should I be uploading more and then don't. But the reason that I'm uploading now is because I got locked out of my Instagram. My Instagram got hacked a couple of maybe 10 days ago, sent out like one of those annoying look at the pictures of you here messages to people and then when I finally got back into it things seemed fine and a couple of days later I got a like suspicious activity has been detected and then I realized that I had never updated my email or my phone number on my Instagram. So I'm now locked out and cannot access my Instagram. That's my exciting story. But I think that has led me to slightly missing being able to chat to people through the medium of my phone. And so I thought I would do a short, famous last words, video on cancel culture. I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of weeks. I think firstly, when Ray Darcy kind of got canceled by Niall Horan fans, um, I'll put a link to anything I refer to in the description below, but Ray Darcy did a sketch with Dustin and Zig and Zag. I think it was for comic relief or for the ISPCC, I think. And in it, Niall Horan did a live performance and at the end, Dustin then went, we were trying to get Harry Styles, you know, Dustin. Fun fact, a friend of mine moved to Ireland uh, from the UK the year that Dustin went to the Eurovision for Ireland. And she said the most confusing moment of her entire life was when she realized that Dustin had not been invented specifically for the Eurovision, but was in fact an Irish national treasure. When she thought it was for the Eurovision, she was like, oh, Irish people are kind of quirky, that's funny. And then she was like, oh no, Dustin exists outside of Eurovision. Anyway, so Dustin said, we were trying to get Harry Styles. And then all the Niall Horan fans basically started tweeting Ray Darcy and going, how dare you like denigrate our national treasure, Niall Horan. But I was thinking about this because a couple of years ago, I made a comment, I was watching The X Factor and I tweeted and I said, I blame Mariah Carey for the fact that people now think screaming is singing. You know the way Mariah Carey does that like, the, like weird scream, kind of, not, not screaming, but like whistling in the back of her throat. And like, it's amazing and it's incredible. She can stay on pitch, but it, in my opinion, it's not singing. Like it doesn't sound nice, if you know what I mean. But a whole load of Mariah Carey stands came for me on Twitter. They found my Instagram. They started leaving comments all over my Instagram. They found photographs of me on Google Images. They sent them to me, basically going, you're just jealous because you're a, you know, descriptors of my appearance that are just descriptors, but people often use pejoratively. And it went on for about three weeks. Um, I think I was interviewed, some guy contacted me because he was doing a book, I actually don't know if he ever did it, but he was doing a book on how Mariah Carey fans were the most rabid in standum. Now, I'd say since that happened, things have changed because I think K-pop stands are quite rabid and so are little mixed stands, weirdly. But all of this made me think about cancel culture. And then of course, we have the more serious conversations going on around cancel culture, thanks to people like Graham Linehan and JK Rowling, who are complaining about the fact that their views are being criticized by people on the internet and this is being conflated with cancel culture. Now, Graham Linehan has more of a leg to stand on than JK Rowling because his Twitter account has actually been permanently suspended for his constant anti-transgender vitriol that he spews Nonstop. I remember seeing a tweet at one stage where somebody said they had counted the number of tweets that Graham Linehan had sent that day and something like 92% of them were about trans rights or, or rights that he thinks trans people shouldn't have and that he had tweeted about it from something like 4am until 1am. So he was literally there for what's that 21 hours straight tweeting about this thing that by and large does not affect his life. JK Rowling has come under fire for tweets that seem to suggest that only people who are born with wombs, only people who are born in female sexed bodies can be considered female. And that trans women can be considered trans women, but can't be considered women. And hers and Graham Linhan's kind of general attitude. And I, and I don't, I mean, I think she would argue very much that Graham Linhan is an anti-trans activist, whereas she is merely voicing opinions that are slightly left of center, slightly right of center maybe. Their attitude seems to be that if you grant trans women all of the rights that cis women, that's cisgender women who are born into female bodies, if you grant them the same rights, you are somehow taking away from a cisgender woman's lived experience, which I, I don't really understand. Like one person's freedom is not another person's shackles, if you know what I mean. Granting trans people the authority and the autonomy to self-identify, for example, makes zero difference to my life. Calling somebody a woman, somebody who has been born in a male body, calling them a woman, like allowing them to be called what makes no difference to my life. And for me, it just seems like a personal freedom and liberation that 
JK Rowling is kind of implying that we need to deny one person so that another person can be free. But the whole thing that I really wanted to talk about was cancel culture and the notion that to cancel someone is somehow wrong, is somehow narrow-minded, is somehow kind of small-minded or limiting. And while I don't necessarily agree with censorship in the sense of not allowing somebody to share their views, I mean, I don't think that we should have banned JK Rowling from saying what she did. I'm glad she said it, and now we all know what she is. I don't think Twitter should have given Graham Linhan a platform to spew the hatred that he spewed for years and years. So in that sense, I agree with censoring him. I think censorship is not something to really strive for in society, but can be of great benefit when the things that you're trying to censor are things that are inciting hatred, inciting violence, or in another way, truly hurting someone whose life is already difficult. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about minorities, we're talking about transgender people whose lives are already incredibly difficult from the moment that they identify as transgender to the moments that they come out to their families. I've actually been watching two very interesting YouTube channels lately by trans women talking a lot about their experience of being trans, about their uh, gender reassignment surgery, about dating as trans women, and I'll link them below. One of them is called um, Matilda Hogberg, and I can't remember the other girl's name, but I will share it below. But it's been really, really interesting to me as somebody I don't have any friends who are trans. I don't know anybody personally who is trans. So it's been really, really interesting to me to get their perspectives. And I would offer a little disclaimer that they are very uh, passing trans women, meaning that they are trans women who look very cisgender, um, which is not the experience of everyone. And like one of the things that when Caitlyn Jenner came out as trans and was pictured on the cover of Vanity Fair, but there was a lot of talk about how it was a lot easier for her because she passed thanks to her money and her privilege and her access to whether it be makeup artists, hairstylists, surgeons, you know, but that is an easier life than somebody who is transgender and who doesn't have the means or the, you know, the financial means or the access to surgeons or to makeup artists and hairstylists, or who maybe just doesn't have the bone structure to quote unquote pass as a cis female. Um, it can be a lot more difficult. But a lot of these big names talk a lot about how to be cancelled is to quash debate. And it reminds me a lot of during the campaign to abolish the Eighth Amendment in Ireland, there was a lot of talk about how we had to give a voice to the other side. And I would really push back against that a lot of the time. Like if the other side is religious zealots, if the other side is bigots, if the other side is fascists, if the other side is racists, whatever conversation you're having, like if we're talking about Black Lives Matter, we don't have to give a voice to the people who think that Black Lives Matter is a way of saying white lives don't matter. We don't have to give a voice to the people who say things like, well, black people have no one to blame but themselves because they're just killing each other. Somebody said that to me last week in America, mind you, which is where I live now. Lucky me. We don't have to give a voice to voices that don't deserve it. I mean, people are absolutely free to share their opinions, but we don't have to listen to them. We don't have to follow them. We can block them. We can refuse to amplify them. None of that is cancelling somebody, but cancelling has been taken to mean somehow getting rid of somebody. Whereas the thing is, social media is a place where people are cancelled and social media is a place where you can choose who you do and don't follow. And if you unfollow someone or block someone and that is interpreted as cancellation, fine. Like we are all free to follow and unfollow whomever we choose. And if we don't wish to give someone a voice, and they interpret that as cancelling, I'm okay with that. I just feel like we have almost forgotten that kind of Spider-Man thing that with great power comes great responsibility. And if you are somebody who's online and you have an audience of a hundred or a hundred thousand, you have a responsibility to that audience. And similarly, that audience has a power over you that if they don't like what you're doing, if they don't approve of what you're saying, they can unfollow you, they can block you, they can lessen your power in terms of those numbers of followers of, um, subscribers and that is entirely their right and I think it would be oversimplistic to imply that to cancel somebody who has an opposing view is to be narrow-minded and I also think um, I saw something on Facebook today that said um can you honestly say that you have never blocked or unfriended somebody for having an opposing view to yours because I can and I thought to myself what a privileged point of view because if somebody has an opposing point of view to a white cisgender heterosexual man for example their opposing view is rarely going to be advocating for his for, for a lessening of his rights. It's not going to be advocating for his existence to be made illegal. It's not going to be advocating for him to not be allowed to live his life. Whereas if you are a person of colour, if you're a transgender woman of colour, if you are a gay person, if you are a transgender man of colour, when somebody 
states an opposing view to you. They're often advocating for your rights to be stripped. They're advocating for your medical treatment to be denied. They're advocating for your very existence to be made more difficult. So of course you would block or unfriend that person. So I just think if you're someone who comes from the point of view that like cancel culture is ridiculous and damaging and we should open our eyes and ears and hear, hear and look at all sides, you're probably somebody who is not in the margins already suffering. And if cancel culture means putting our money where our mouths are and unfollowing the people whose views we disagree with, not giving them the power to spew hate on their platforms, then I'm all for it. That is my update, possibly the shortest YouTube video I've ever done. Thank you so much for watching. If you agree or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all those good things. And if you would like to read more of my opinions, you can do so at Patreon from $1 a month, patreon.com slash Rosemary McCabe, where I share a minimum of three essays a week. I think it's good bang for your buck and you get to support yet another cisgender white woman sharing her opinions on the internet. Bye.